Well, good morning. It's a beautiful morning here in southwest Minnesota. Uh, the sun is just coming up over Lake Okabina. There's a clear blue sky. Uh, kind of makes you forget when you look out the window that there's a negative 30 degree wind chill along with it. Of course, we're not having church this morning, but it's still the Lord's Day and uh, we still want to spend some time in His Word. Now, we've been going over spiritual disciplines these last few weeks. It's our theme for this year, for 2020. And remember, spiritual disciplines are activities that lead to attitudes. Activities that lead to attitudes. Uh, spiritual disciplines are not things which help us win God's favor or, or convince Him to show us His grace. He's already done that for us. Rather, spiritual disciplines demonstrate our gratitude for what He's done. Uh, they're the way that the Holy Spirit transforms us into looking more and more like Jesus Christ. And of course, the foundation to our spiritual disciplines are Bible intake. We've talked about that now last week, and we're going to talk about that again today as well. Last week, we heard that the Word of God keeps us on this path to purity, keeps us uh, looking more and more like Christ. Uh, we've been promoting really hard this 5x5 five five Bible reading program. Uh, and many of you are doing your best to do that every day, but you're, you're finding out that it's challenging, isn't it? it? It can be overwhelming. You open your Bible and the first thing you see is this massive sea of words. Uh, and often it's really small print, uh, depending on what kind of printed Bible you have. Uh, sometimes these chapters seem really, really long and it's hard to pay attention all the way through. Mine kind of wanders off. Mine does that too. Uh, then you read about these obscure, culturally bound things that, that really don't make any sense to us. Uh, living in the year 2020 anymore, these activities and phrases, and especially in the Old Testament, it's, it's hard to know what that's all about. And so it's confusing. You, you, you spend this time reading God's Word, and then five minutes later, you've forgotten what you've read, and you think, this is a total waste of time. Well, this morning, we're going to look at Joshua 1, uh, and we're going to see Joshua being commissioned uh, to lead God's people. And, and God tells Joshua not just to take courage in his word, but he gives Joshua some specific things that he can do to make his word uh, active in Joshua's life. Now, ways that Joshua can grab a hold of, of God's word and make it profitable, profitable, not just for himself, but for the Israelites as well. And these lessons would prove hugely valuable, and not just for Joshua, of course, but, but also for the people of Israel. And uh, and, and these same lessons that we're going to read this morning uh, can help us more fully experience the value that comes from reading God's Word. So we don't get sidetracked by some of these difficulties uh, that plague us all as we, as we sit down to read the Bible. So I invite you to, to grab a Bible, even if you need to pause the video here a second. Go grab a Bible, open it up to Joshua 1. It helps if you read along with an open Bible. We'll have some of these verses on the screen. Uh, but but get your Bible out. We're going to read the first nine verses of Joshua 1. Uh, and we're just going to be concentrating on, on from about verse 5 to five to 9. But we're going to read this whole chapter because we want to get some of the context uh, so we can understand what's going on. So hear now the word of the Lord. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land that I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses... So I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give to them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. 
Let's take a moment to, to thank God for these words. Father, we're grateful for these words that you've given us this morning on this cold January morning in Minnesota. Lord, we pray that we would be warmed and fed by your word here, even though we cannot be meeting together this morning in your house. All this we pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we look at Joshua this morning, we're going to see that God's word is your connection to salvation. And if you want to be strong and courageous, then obey God's word. First of all, let's see how this works out. God is your connection to salvation. God's word brought strength and courage to Joshua. We see that in verse 6. God is calling Joshua to lead his people across the river and into the promised land. Of course, the promised land is flowing with milk and honey. But it's also full of giants and, and well-trained armies. Well, we know that Joshua is brave. He's already led the Israelites into battle, even as they were wandering in the desert. We know that Joshua has faith. He was, of course, one of the 12 spies that went into Canaan to check it out. And 10 of them came back and said, there's no way that we can move there. It's just too dangerous, too, too many issues that we can't overcome. But Joshua and Caleb, of course, they had faith that Israel could conquer those giants and those well-trained armies because they knew the Lord was with them. But still, God can sense Joshua's fear as he prepares to enter the promised land. And so three times here, God tells Joshua to be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. And we see here that when we have fear, and we all do, when we have fear, it's not from a lack of faith. Joshua had tremendous faith, but yet he had fear. And, it's, and so when we have fear and, and discouragement and frustration, you don't need to worry that you're not having enough faith. Uh, even Joshua felt these same things. Uh, not only Joshua, but David did as well, King David. And not only King David and Joshua, but, but the Apostle Paul felt this way from time to time. Even Jesus, as we been reading about him in the book of Mark, going through the Garden of Gethsemane in, in chapter 15 there, uh, afraid. I guess that would be in chapter 14. And God tells Joshua here in this passage, and he tells you, you see that in verse 9, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Why can Joshua count on that? Well, God tells him in verse 5, As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. But see, here's the thing. God leads Joshua and he leads us differently than he led Moses. God physically led Moses. Remember, God appeared to Moses, first of all, in the burning bush. And then as the Israelites were out in the desert, Moses spent 40 days up on the mountain with God. And when he came down, Moses' face glowed from being with God. Moses was able to talk with God, to converse back and forth with him. And of course, God led Moses and the people from a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. God's presence was physically there for Moses. But God leads Joshua and he leads us to peace through his word. See, it's different than he led Moses. Now he leads us by his word. You see that in verse 7. God tells Joshua to be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Verse 8, keep this book of the law. Of course, as we learned last week, uh, uh, the law here doesn't just mean the Ten Commandments or even, even all of the uh, other laws and, and regulations that are given there in those first five books of the, of the Bible. Uh, God's law really means his word. It's a synonym for his word, for, for everything that we have contained in the Bible. And God will be just as close to Joshua as he was to Moses, but of course it's going to be in a different way. The physical manifestations of God, uh, God appearing uh, in the ways that he did, those are going to phase out. And they're going to phase out as God's written revelation increases. The, this ongoing principle is out throughout Scripture. As God reveals himself more and more in his writing, he less and less physically reveals himself. In this coming week, we're going to start reading the book of Acts. And you're going to see miracles and signs that were in that early church. Had, uh, wonderful things that were happening and amazing things that were happening. And you say, well, why are these things not occurring anymore in today's church? Well, the same principle is at work. God's full written revelation is now complete. 
And so we can see him, we can know him through the Bible just as clearly as the early church saw God and saw Christ through miracles. We just have it all in God's word now. So God's word brings strength and courage to us. The word of God, of course, the, the whole point of it is to lead us to Christ. These Old Testament stories, like what you would read about if we keep reading in the book of Joshua, they're not just entertainment for us. They're not just good stories, good moral examples of, of how we ought to do things. Rather, they show us that God always sends a Savior for his people. Uh, the, what we're reading in the New Testament, the Gospels and the, the, the letters that we're reading, they're, they're not just to tell us what Jesus would do in various situations so that we could do that as well. But they're there for us to know Christ, to know what he did to secure our salvation. So God's word is our connection to salvation. So if you want to be strong and courageous, well, then obey God's word. If you're going to obey God's word, then you need to, to know what God's word says. Obedience depends upon knowledge. Ignorance isn't an excuse. I, I learned this the hard way. I was driving through an area a few years ago, and turns out the speed limit was way lower than what I thought it was, and got pulled over. And I explained that to the state trooper. Hey, I thought that it was a higher speed limit here. He says, well, that's too bad, so sad. Ignorance is not an excuse for, for breaking the law. And it turns out I had driven past several speed limit signs that had that should have told me that the speed limit was lower. Well, I didn't notice them. And even if I did notice them, I didn't remember that I had driven by them. Well, it's the same when we, we hear and, and read God's word. It's just not always enough for us to just glance over those chapters and, and even read through them. You can sometimes read that and you can hear it as plain as day. And a few minutes later, you've forgotten everything that you've read. I know that happens a lot for me, and I, I bet you that happens for some of you as well. So what we need to do is train ourselves to benefit from reading God's Word. Train ourselves to benefit from reading God's Word. We're going to look at three ways to do that. First of all, we want to memorize God's Word. Memorize it. Verse 7, God tells Joshua not to turn from God's Word to the right or to the left. Now, of course, we all have GPS in our cars, but you, most of you can remember back that it used to be that uh, you either had to know where you were going or you had to have a map on your lap as you were driving. And of course, that doesn't work very well. You can't read the map and safely drive all the time uh, uh, in, a, in a safe way. That's not, that's not a good thing to do. Uh, so in or, if you're going to stick to the route, if you're not going to turn to the right or to the left, you need to have a basic idea of how to get where we're going, you have to have that memorized, don't you? You have to know where we're, where, you have to have a basic idea of memorized. Well, life is going to come at you pretty hard and pretty fast. Last week, we, we learned once again that the Word of God keeps us on the path to purity. But see, here's the time. You're not always going to have the ability to look up what God's Word says. You've got to have that memorized. It's just got to be in your brain. Uh, they're ready to recall at any moment. Of course, memorization, memorization, it's hard work. And I really struggle to memorize things. I'm not very good at that. Um, some of you are better at that than what others are. Some people memorize things really, really easily. I don't. And Donald Whitney, we've been going through his book, uh, and there's not very many books I recommend to people, but this is a really, really good one. You'll see a link to his book lower on the page uh, when we get through with this. You can take a look at that. But he gives several tips to help people memorize. First of all, you need to have a plan. And that's really where this 5 by 5 Bible reading program can help you out. Because we're going to recommend a couple of verses per week that you can memorize. And usually I try and pick verses that are short. Uh, I'm looking for things that are one sentence that really pack a punch. Easy to remember, not very many words. Occasionally, I'll pick a longer one that's that's two or three sentences, but usually those are ones that are quite familiar anyways, uh, and you're just going to re-memorize them in many situations. Uh, but but short verses are, are easy to memorize, and, and, and uh, they, they are easy to recall when you need them then as well. And you're going to keep... Uh, adding new memory verses every week to your list. And that means you need to, to go back to your list and, 
and review what you've learned already. And we'll give you a link to do that when memory verses come up so that you can look at the ones that you've memorized before and keep them in your memory. Uh, but all of a sudden you're going to say, hey, this is starting to take a lot of time every day. I thought you said this 5x5 five five Bible reading program was five minutes a day, five days a week. Well, yeah, five minutes a day is a start. Uh, and it's going to take time to dig into God's Word. But remember, it's worth it to invest your time and effort into this because you're building up treasure in heaven. Uh, so you need to have a plan, and the 5x5 five five Bible reading program can, can help you get, get you that plan. Secondly, Whitney says you need to find a method, something that works for you to memorize uh, Scripture. And it's going to be different for for all people. We all memorize differently, and so you have to find something that works for you. But there's there's some things here that, that work generally for, for most people. And one of those big ones is repetition. Repetition is the key to memory. Uh, so put that memory verse somewhere where you're going to see it throughout the day. The, the easiest way to do it is just write it out on a sticky note, maybe. And you can put that sticky note on your computer monitor. Uh, you could put it on your dashboard if you're in the truck all day long or in the tractor. Uh, it's really a great way to do it. Those those of you who are driving uh, either out in the field or, or in the truck, uh, you have an advantage here of, of being able to, to spend time meditating and memorizing these things. Take advantage of that. Uh, put that verse somewhere where you can see it and repeat it throughout the day. And the other cool thing is, is as you do that, you're going to start to associate the things that you're driving by with various memory verses. And that's a really a cool tool to help you memorize things. You're going to associate that corner or this guy's farm with with that verse that you're uh, memorizing at the same time. And it's really cool how that works out. Um, another good way to, to memorize things is to just write it out over and over throughout the day. Uh, some of you might remember back in school, if you got in trouble, you had to write out lines. Of course, I never had to do that, but I, I've seen kids do it before. <laughs> uh, and, and actually, that's a really good way to memorize things. Uh, you have to you have to write it out, and, and it helps get a physical activity in there rather than just uh, reading it over and over in your head. You're you're making your hand write that out, and it, it associates a physical activity. Uh, much in the same way as you're driving and memorizing this, you're going to associate it with, with things that you're driving by. Your your brain loves to associate things. And the more connections you can make to something uh, physically, what you're seeing, hearing at the same time, it all helps with your memorization. Uh, some of you, it would help to draw a picture of what's going on in that verse. Uh, if you're really artistic that way, that's that's a great way to memorize uh, I'm, I'm going to put another link on our website to a to a website that I've used often when I've had to memorize things. And it's it's not a very impressive looking website. It was made several years ago and you can kind of tell it's older looking, but it works really, really well. And what it does is you put the verse in there that you want to memorize and it takes uh, it just gives you the first letter of each word. And so after you've read that verse like a couple of times. Uh, and then all, all you need is to see that, that first letter of each word. And then you start reading that, that. It's amazing how your brain just fills in the rest. And then it just it just burns it into your memory. It, it works really, really well. So I'll put that link on the page here this morning as well. So you're going to memorize God's word. Secondly, you're going to meditate on it. Uh-oh, there's that word again. Meditate. Uh, well, we're told to do this by God. You see that in verse 8 there. Uh, kind of towards the end of it, meditate on uh, God's word day and night, God tells Joshua. And of course, this isn't hippie style meditation. Uh, this isn't the type of meditation where you're trying to empty your mind. Uh, be careful of those kind of things, by the way. That's very, very dangerous to do. Uh, because when you go and empty your mind, guess who's waiting right there to fill it back up again? Uh, Satan loves those situations. It's very, very dangerous, that kind of meditation. That's not at all what we mean to meditate on God's Word. And what it means here is to just chew on it all day long. Be thinking about it all throughout the day as you're doing your other things. And you say, how can I do that? Well, again, Whitney, Donald Whitney gives us some, some good tips on doing this. First of all, you need to be committed to doing this. Uh, at first, it's going to be a chore to do this every day. But then once you get this habit established... Oh, it's going to be a way of life. You're going to be. It's going to be hard to work without doing it. So you first, you first get that commitment. First, for it's a desire to do it. And then secondly, you need to find a passage to meditate on. Don't try and meditate on an entire chapter. That's that's not going to work. 
Uh, it's important that you read the whole chapter uh, because you need to get the context of what's going on. Uh, and But as you're reading the chapter, and, and, and sometimes you're going to be really engaged with those words, and sometimes they're just going to be kind of, you're going to be thinking about something else as you're reading, and, and that happens to everyone. But as you're reading, be looking for things that the Holy Spirit is drawing you to, uh, that you can be thinking about throughout the day. You need to, to be reading through it with a pencil, almost. Uh, and then as you as you see something interesting that you want to go back and look at, just, just circle that or put a dash by it or something, and, and then come back and look at that. Uh, you want to read big every day. You want to be able to get the context of, of the Scripture. That's why we read a, min, a minimum of a chapter a day. Uh, but then meditate small. Go back to just a verse or maybe even just a word in a verse. Uh, look at those details and, and be thinking about that all day long. Uh, and again, your daily text message, uh, that link that, that we put out, that'll help you uh, find these details that you can meditate on throughout the day, be thinking about throughout the day. Uh, so take advantage of that. It's, it's one thing I work at in, in trying to figure out what to put in those messages or in those posts every day. I want things that you can be thinking about and that will apply to your life. Uh, so you're 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 gonna find what you want to meditate on as you read the whole chapter, and then go back and read those verses really slowly, almost like you're memorizing them. Uh, and then just dig deeper into it. Again, Donald Whitney in his book, he gives us 15 different methods that you can use to do that. And I've put uh, put that on our website. There'll be a link on the on the bottom of the page there. Uh, and, and, and there are things that, that you can do uh, that will really help you understand. One of the, the best things that he recommends doing is, is rewriting the text in your own words. So in other words, John 3.16, you might change the pronouns around a little bit uh, so that you can understand what God is saying. And, and, and it becomes something like this, for God so loved me that he sacrificed his only son so that I can be saved. Of course, that's not what the text says, but it's what it means. And so you, you start changing those words around a little bit. You can kind of get a good idea of what God is saying through it. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with doing that, with changing those words a little bit so that you can understand it. Uh, it's, it's actually a really good practice. Come up with different illustrations and analogies that, that help explain. Just kind of pretend that you would have to explain this passage to somebody else. And, and what analogies, what illustrations would you use to do that? Another really good method that Whitney uh, recommends is praying the text back to God. And, and this is something that we'll work on throughout this year, too. It's amazing how much of the Bible is designed to be prayed right back to God. Uh, and it works really, really well to help you meditate upon that and, and uh, bring God right into that conversation. So you're going to memorize Scripture. You're going to meditate scripture on Scripture and finally, you're going to mouth scripture. I was just looking for another M word there, but look at what it says in verse 8b. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Really, you've seen that you're going to be needing to do that in order to memorize scripture, in order to meditate upon it. you got to be kind of saying it over and over throughout the day. But not just to yourself. You need to talk about it with other people. Talk about it at home, especially with your kids. That's why... Doing your Bible reading and, and digging deeper into God's Word is, is so important to do at the dinner table. Whether you use our 5x5 five five, uh, reading plan to do that or some sort of other devotional book, it's so important to be talking about God's Word. Uh, and So you talk about it at home. You talk about it in your general conversation with other Christians. There's, there's lots of people here in, in southwest Minnesota that are doing this Bible reading program. Um, and so as you see people around town, talk about it with them. Talk about what you're reading. Uh, that's a way to dig deeper into it and to understand it better. Um, and the more you memorize these passages, the more you meditate upon them, the more natural this will seem. So God's word is your connection to, to, to salvation. God's word is your connection to salvation. And if you want to be strong and courageous, obey God's word. But so you got to train yourself to dig deep into God's word. And when you do that, it's going to bring success. Look at that in verse 7. You do this, Joshua, so that you may be successful wherever you go. And then in verse 8 as well, then you will be prosperous and successful. These are promises that God makes to Joshua and he makes to us. Now, these promises come on two different levels. First of all, there's earthly success. And often we're too quick to pass over this kind of fact. You see, we're not really into this health and wealth gospel 
uh, at our church and for good, very good reasons. Uh, but we can't pass over some of these promises that God makes. Uh, and in general, if you follow God's word, you're going to be prosperous and successful. You read that right here. You see that in the Proverbs and other wisdom literature. Now, this isn't a guarantee. It's not a promise. Some of the most spiritually disciplined people in history, well, they didn't have any worldly success throughout their life, even though they lived according to God's word. But it doesn't matter because earthly success isn't our goal. Eternal, eternal success is what we're looking for. God will save people who obey his word. You even see that in the New Testament. Uh, the, the law of the gospel is something that we need to adhere to, to believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, if you respond positively to that, if you adhere to that, God will save you. And of course, we adhere to it by the Holy Spirit. Uh, and then he leads us to eternal success in Jesus Christ. And this is something that's guaranteed to all Christians. Whether or not you have earthly success, you will have eternal success in Christ by believing in him. We saw that last week. God increases our eternal reward the more we invest time and effort into our spiritual disciplines. It's really amazing that, that we can make uh, a bigger reward for us in heaven by living according to God's word here on earth. The, the New Testament is full of promises like that. So God's word is your connection to salvation. And if you want to be strong and courageous, obey God's word. I hope you have a great day here uh, digging out from the from the snowstorm and enjoying the cold. Hopefully we can come together tonight, uh, yet weather permitting, we'll, we'll let you know. But have a good day.